Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guides channel. How are you all doing today? Today we're going to be talking about Minnesota again and the fact that they have decided out of a council meeting out of 7 out of 12 of the council members in there so they have a majority to indirectly abolish the police out there by defunding them and trying to shift the funds into other avenues without actually having any direct response to crime as it happens or directly after it happens. But but let's get into the story and actually find out what's going on, how it's happening, what what's, what's all, all the fuss about. Let's get into the story, shall we? Uh, we've, we've got a, a lot, a lot to talk about. <laughs> So this is from the Guardian newspaper because of course it is. Minneapolis lawmakers vowed to disband the police department in historic move. The city council members declare intent to abolish embattled agency and replace them with alternative model in wake of George Floyd's killing. So some people would say that this is a good thing. Some people would say that this is a bad thing. I, I am of the former of the opinion but that, let's find out before we start going into diatribes and working out what's going on that let's actually do that and work out what's going on what is the system that they impose what what do they suppose is going to be better than having the police shall we so that, let's go and do that by reading what's happening shall we so the minneapolis city council has pledged to disband the city's police department and replace it with a new system of public safety now, that doesn't actually go into anything or tell anything about anything, but let's carry on. Obviously, it's a historic move that comes as calls to defund the law enforcement are sweeping the US. Speaking at a community rally on Sunday, a veto-proof majority of council members declared their intent to dismantle and abolish the embattled police agency responsible for police, uh, George Floyd's death, and build an alternative model of community-led safety. Hmm. Community-led safety. Does that mean people enforcing laws independently, without any governing body, without any other way of being held accountable, and it's the community that is going to be enforcing the law as a police force? So... When people were talking before about citizen's arrest, as in what's happened with the person who was supposed to have been jogging, that's now going to be common practice, is it? That that's, that's, that's the decision to be able to move forward. Okay, interesting. That, that's let the mob decide and rule? I mean, how far back in history do we have to go to realise that these ideas just don't work? Let's carry on and see if I'm wrong. The decision is a direct response to the massive protests that have taken over American cities in the last two weeks. So it's not a case that they just want to abolish the police, they also want to abolish the prisons as well. So even if you do commit a crime or have committed murder or anything of the sort, they're going to abolish the idea of prisons. Now. I'm certain that they don't mean that they're going to abolish the idea of people paying for crimes, sure. But they're actually getting rid of the only way that we know universally, at the minute, that actually holds them. Because let's be honest, a lot of people are not reformable. But, again, those are just my opinions. Let's move on to actual quotes that they have decided that they're going to put into this, shall we? So... In Minneapolis and in cities across the US, it is clear that our system of policing is not keeping our communities safe, said Lisa Bender. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I'm in favour of the police as they are. I'm not saying that they are amazing, I'm not saying that they are great, I'm not saying that they are perfect. By any stretch of imagination, there was an idea of reform that was needed. And this should have been the catalyst for doing that, 
and making the police force in general better. For instance, the idea of extra training, the idea of conditional training, de-escalation training, situational tra training, to be able to put yourself into those types of positions and understand how other people feel and so on and so forth. That that no, that that's let's not do any of that. Let's just abolish the police and let's self community <laughs> Sorry. Let's just self police ourselves because that's obviously gonna work. Us deciding as community and community officers are gonna be the ones that are going to enforce laws evenly, actually, and making sure that they are held accountable. What governing body is gonna hold or hold these people accountable for. Just saying that you're going to abolish these types of things doesn't actually give you any crooks to the idea of what you're actually doing afterwards. Just because that you think that you need to do something, abolishing the police service that is there primarily to keep people safe, and if you don't believe that they're there to keep people safe, they are there primarily to make sure that people that have committed crimes get punished for them in the actual fact of being arrested and then taken to justice and taken to court to have their day in court, so to speak. But how does this system actually work that they're going to have this community response or community-led safety model? How's that going to work? Should we go and find out? Let's find out. But before that we do that, let's read why this is so important and why it's... Almost a reason that they cannot actually be stopped now. So, nine council members announced their support and represent a supermajority on the 12-person council, meaning the mayor, who earlier this week opposed disbanding the department, cannot override them. The remaining three council members are broadly supportive of the effort as well, but weren't ready to sign on, activists said. While the mayor has oversight over the police and he has come out and said that he will not abolish the police, the only person that seems to be in any sort of form of leadership there that actually has a modicum of understanding that if you get rid of the police, you have a form of anarchy, where you actually have the prescribed colloquial definition of it. You're going to have people deciding that they're going to protect their stores by shooting people that they deem to be a threat, with no oversight. That's the problem that you have here. Yeah, the police were bad, in some aspects, and some police officers were really bad. But you have oversight. You have people that can investigate them. If you have a community-led area and community-led safety team, so to speak, how are you going to have oversight? Where is your actual overarching point on this? It makes no goddamn sense. Put more body cams on police officers so they know what they're, that they're, everything that they're doing is recorded. More training. But now you're going to abolish all of the safety precautions that you put in place for the police, scrap it all, and then put in community-led safety areas where you're going to have people that may or may not be able to actually entertain or go after people that are directly committing crimes because this won't reduce crimes, ladies and gentlemen. This will not reduce crimes. People are still going to rape. They're still going to murder. They're still going to loot. They're still going to thieve because humanity, ladies and gentlemen, is selfish primarily. So this little section here, ladies and gentlemen, is actually what they're going to do to actually enforce any sort of law that comes into play. This is how they're going to tackle crimes, ladies and gentlemen. After the police are gone, and all of the instances that, that they actually do to minimize crime, or at least keep us safe overall, even if it's after the fact, this is what they're going to do to make sure that you, ladies and gentlemen, in Minneapolis are safe. Lawmakers and advocates across the US will likely be closely watching what happens next in Minneapolis. It's unclear how quickly this process could move and what the transition could look like. In other words, they want to abolish the police, but don't actually have a good idea. They don't actually have a good idea of what they're doing because they don't actually have an idea of what the transition can look like. Supporters are pushing for the council to start with taking money away from the police budget and investing in other government departments, social services and programs while launching a community process for creating alternative systems. 
So let's break that down, ladies and gentlemen. So they're going to take money away from the police budget. And what they're going to do is that they're going to put it into other governmental departments, such as social services programs, counseling services and stuff like that, while also launching a community based alternative for policing. They're going to let the mob police their local area with all intrinsic rights of doing what they want to enforce those laws. In other words, they're going to actually let mob rule dictate who's wrong, who's right, who's against the law, who needs arresting. I personally don't want to live in a world where the mob decides to rule what actually goes on, who's guilty, who's innocent, who decides to be arrested, who's not deciding to be arrested. I don't want the mob, the community as a whole, to decide who, what, where and when is actually happening. I want the law to be what is telling us what and who is a criminal. Not the mob. Not if you were deciding to walk down a road and you called somebody a name that you're going to get pounced on by the whole community and then arrested for saying something stupid. I don't want that. But is that what's going to happen here, especially with creating alternative systems with community processes? Let's carry on, shall we? An alternative safety model, advocates say, can start with finding non-police... <laughs> non-police solutions to the problems poor people face, such as counsellors responding to mental health calls and addiction experts responding to drug abuse. Now that's amazing and that should already be put into place. And I actually agree with the idea of increasing those types of fundings. And I also agree with actually putting those types of people in place. I agree with that. But what you're actually forgetting, ladies and gentlemen, is that you haven't decided how the hell you're going to deal with people raping somebody or in the midst of murdering somebody. You're going to have the community decide that they're going to have to put their lives on the line to try and sort out the people that are murdering and raping people. Or even just simple goddamn robbery. You're going to have to have the community well armed, well regulated and deciding what they know about the law. You are literally advocating for the Second Amendment that you encapsulated as saying that you didn't want. You are literally advocating at the minute for a well-regulated militia of the people, by the people, to regulate itself. Is that a good thing? Do you think that those redneck boys, as you would like to say, are going to be following the law to their disposition or to your disposition? Or do you reckon that those types of people might take the law into their own hands in their own communities? All you're going to do is fracture the city even more than what it is. Communities will defend their own communities and to hell with everybody else. This is literal mob rule. And again, I'm not trying to say that I think that the police are amazing. I'm not trying to say that the police overall are great. But taking away a police force that is supposed to be abiding by the laws to make sure that everybody is supposedly treated equally. In response, you're going to give it to the community and knowing that the community themselves, as you quite rightly state, have their own forms of prejudice and their own forms of identity and their own forms of culture that will be against other people's forms of culture and identity are going to have those prejudices and they're not going to have an oversight committee or a, a person or institution to be able to overlook what's going on, how it's going on. You're not going to have body cam footage anymore to be able to decide wh whether these people did the right thing or not. You're not going to have oversight. But you think this is going to be a better solution than reforming the police. You're going to abolish it and let the mob dictate your rule. This is absolutely amazing to me, ladies and gentlemen, and God damn it, only in America can this actually happen. So, yeah, that seems a very interesting story, doesn't it? Where we're having council members that have decided that what they're going to do is put in a supermajority vote so nobody can challenge them on the idea of defunding them. So even if the state comes in, or even if the federal government comes in, 
they cannot change the fact of this happening because they control the funding. So even if it comes to a case of the mayor or the state deciding that what they're going to do is that they're actually going to keep hold of the police, they're going to lose the funding for the police regardless anyway. So the police force, if they even stay in effect, will get worse and worse due to less and less funding. And then this is going to be a justification for why the police should be abolished completely and utterly overall in favour of these social programmes that are there to really, and I mean this honestly, to deal with after effects rather than actually dealing with a situation that is occurring. Now, maybe it's a good thing to have it happen beforehand and maybe it would be a preemptive strike, so to speak, to be able to sort these things out at the root before something happens. And that's a great way to go. And I think that that in conjunction with policing is a good way to go. I'm not trying to say that the ideas themselves are not good ideas. I think some of them actually are really good ideas and they do need to be implemented. You do need more instant access for people that have mental issues and mental conditions, especially in the USA, being able to get to that and having not a worry about what the cost is to that. Because if you have mental health issues and you're going to have the chance of committing murder or going out and hurting somebody, shouldn't society as a whole realise that that's probably something that we should put down as a, uh, a governmental funding scheme so other people are not getting hurt? Now, yeah, there may be a chance of it being abused by certain people, but in some cases, isn't that a better thing than people going out and dying and losing police over this? Because I'll be honest with you, I do think that the police do need a reform, and I'm completely and utterly with everybody on that idea and notion, especially over in the police in the US. But overall, taking away the funding of the police only makes the police worse. Trying to abolish the police doesn't provide any extra safety to the actual people in and around your communities. Because what you're doing is that you're actually looking at the problem from one perspective, and that's the perspective of people like Derek Chavan. That those types of people that are overstepping their mark, overstepping their boundaries, and unfortunately, overstepping their mark to an extent where they're killing people. And he should be, and is, being tried for murder. So are the other people as well, being an accessory to the facts, and so on and so forth. Which should be the case. They should be arrested, they should have stuff happen to them. Evidently. But abolishing the police? That's a ludicrous idea to me. Not simply because I'm attached to the idea of policing. But because the idea of policing isn't supposed to be a case of them oppressing people. It is supposed to be a case of them dealing with crimes and investigating crimes and dealing with the worst scum that society actually has. Do you think the community in itself is strong enough to be able to deal with gang violence? Do you think that it's strong enough to be able to deal with people that are prepared to go out of the way to kill, rape and murder while they're producing drugs? Do you honestly think that this is going to be a beneficial state for Minnesota? Do you actually honestly think that Minnesota is going to benefit from the abolishment of the police in this aspect? I'll be watching with a very modicum of interest, and I don't mean to be belittling to it, but I'm pretty sure that I know what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure that we're going to see an increase in crime. I'm pretty sure that we're going to see an increase in community support officers getting hurt and shot in the line of duty and I'm pretty sure that there will be an outcry for a form of police force again and then the community themselves will then turn into a form of police force that's not run by the government but community led. I'm pretty sure that that's the way that that's going to go but in turn all that means is that you've caused more pain, more suffering, more death, more crime because of your lack of not wanting to actually reform the police and your knee-jerk reaction to try and sort something out. Something must be done. So what must be done is the abolishment of something we do not like, rather than reformation or increasing funding, for instance. But those are my opinions. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think it's a good idea to abolish the police overall and outright? Or do you think that this is a stupid idea? Well, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you did like this video or even if you're just interested in the topic. I will see you all again real soon. So take care. Bye for now.